Welcome to Shovelware Diggers. Our dig team's currently excavating the Soft Key Shareware 2000 Hit Games 2CD Collection. You can find a link in the video description containing the entire directory structure of this archive. Here's what our diggers have for week 164. For more information on how to join the dig team, simply follow the Patreon link in the video description. Now without further ado, let's get started. First up, RuneFox has dug up win games backslash card backslash win bj. This is probably going to be blackjack and not anything to do with, you know, <laughs> adult stuff. Or, uh, that's a lot of wave files for a blackjack game. Um, I also got BWCC, so we know it's written with um, Borland C. Uh, what's the text file? Okay, Windows Blackjack, good. <laughs> so, not adult related, hopefully. Anyways, written by Robert Vilwak. I think that's how you pronounce that. Um, game executable, Borland Dynamic Link Library, and sound files. And then setup details. And the person wanted $10 for registration. So, not a bad price for a piece of Windows software, but then it depends on how well it works. Let's find out. So, Windows Blackjack. Um, well, it doesn't maximize. Nope. <laughs> Always got to test that. So even though it has a resizable border, it doesn't maximize properly. Go figure. Okay, so you got bets here, bank, player, dealer. Interesting font on the buttons here. I'm not really sure what font that is. Um, so we got the about screens there. Sound is on. Select card design. Okay, so it looks like it's using the standard Windows cards, except there's a few here which aren't standard. Huh. Also, this would be a very weird card design to use as the card backing because it looks like a front of a card, <laughs> the back of a card. Um, I don't know. We'll go with the palm trees. Why not? And game deck options. So you can set the number of decks. You can set burned and buried cards. Bet limits. Bet style. What? Why didn't any of those have any ticks on them? That was weird. Um, well, I guess I'll go manual bet style and... I oh, will play with four decks. Okie dokie, so... This raises our bet. Uh, I'll do 50. And then deal. Insurance. <laughs> okay, that was interesting. Game just asked if I wanted insurance. Because, yes, the dealer is showing an ace there. Um, I'm going to say no. Ha! Dealer didn't have blackjack. And I'm sitting on 16 there, so... Oh, yeah, I'm going to stand. Woohoo! Dealer busted. So... Um, I guess... we got min-max buttons here for, I guess, minimum bet and maximum bet. X buttons, I'm guessing these... Tr that'll triple it. Oh no, these are um, X multipliers of the minimum, I think. Yeah, that's how it works. So 5X means 5 times the minimum. But we'll bring it back up to 50, because it doesn't really matter, because it's, it seems to be tracking just the change from a base value. So we're up 50 at the moment. Um, well, I got 20, and the dealer's showing a 9. That's definitely a stand. <laughs> what is with these sound effects? <laughs> um, dealer's showing a jack, and I've got 13. That's not good. I think that's going to be a hit. Or maybe. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a hit. Um. Admittedly, the dealer might have busted that too, but... Deal. We got a 10. That's definitely a hit. I got 13. Um... Dealer's only showing a three. I think I'm gonna stand on that. Oh, no. Nope. <laughs> These are weird sound effects. Fifteen, dealer's showing a ten. Um the blackjack's not on point today, so I'm having trouble <laughs> remembering my hit stand rules here. Um I think it's just gonna stand on this. 
Nope. Um, I got 20. Dealer showing a 10. That's definitely Yippee! a stand. I've got 15. Dealer showing a 7. That's a hit. Oops. Nope. I've got 11. So that's definitely a hit. And now I got tw 19. Oh, it actually says at the side what I've got there. So yeah, 19. That's definitely a stand. Push. <laughs> oh, that was a... You know, that was a push. Oh, that's interesting. The game did a less sort of shuffling sound effect to indicate that it was reshuffling the deck. Hmm. So yeah, this just seems to be a very basic um, blackjack Insurance? game. Nothing too crazy going on here, um, but... Insurance? <laughs> aside from the game constantly asking me for insurance. But yeah, it does the job, what? so... Except for the Insurance? fact that I keep losing for some reason. <laughs> Yahoo! Except for that time. But yeah, fair, pretty ad adequate blackjack game with really crazy sound effects. Next up, we have a new digger, the Great Code Holio, who's dug up DOS games backslash adventure backslash AV. I'm gonna guess the A and AV there stands for adventure, but I otherwise have no idea what this is gonna be here. Um, we've got something called Ava Word. We've got AV.doc, EJVGABGI, so we know it's Turbo something, either Turbo C or Turbo Pascal. Um, and a lot of AVD files, as well as a pedigree.doc. Interesting. Well, let's go edit the av.doc. Supposed to read this file first. Well, good. Thorsoft of Letchworth presents Benarius Avaricious Sextus Roman Graphical Adventure Game by Mike, Mark, and Thomas Thurman. Okay, looks like a bunch of brothers made this. So... The background. Back in good old AD 79, there lived a patrician Roman named Avaricious. Avi to his friends. He was about 26 years old and about 6 foot 3. A tall Roman. He had married a woman named Arcata, which was a mistake he lived to regret. She never stopped nagging him. His few slaves were so lazy he hardly ever saw them, except for one named Crapulus, who was always at least inebriated, if not downright drunk. Apart from reading Avi's mail, amazing he could read, and doing the washing up, he preferred to spend his time with an amphora of wine down at the Canisetanus. <laughs> Okay, so this backstory appears to be, um, weird. Oh, hang on a second here. Something else to note. To get a list of everything you're holding, you can type inventory, but it's much easier to press control I or even just tab. Is this going to be like a King's Quest type game? This might actually be like a King's Quest type game. Also, it says here that the game is only five quid or ten bucks for registration. And I believe five quid is like five pounds. So that would suggest that the game probably was made in Europe. Um, or the UK, I should say. Um, well, hang on here. <laughs> this game is environmentally friendly. It doesn't damage the ozone layer. It has never in tests been shown to pollute the Irish Sea with radioactive substances. And it was not tested on animals. They don't like the jokes anyways. Furthermore, 97% of the jokes used in this release were recycled. I don't know what happened to the other 3%. This is actually a pretty um big document file here. There's a lot of stuff in here. Even revision histories. So, anyways, let's actually just play this thing. So, AV. Okay. I've got a funny feeling it's running too fast, <laughs> and that is one of the most disturbing sounds ever. Okay, I think I've dialed in the right speed here. Although, amazingly, the music still doesn't sound very, um, good. <laughs> Although, maybe it's just me. Maybe it's because I just don't like this, um... 
This is one of the aspects of chiptunes that I'm actually not a big fan of, is when it's constantly switching back and forth between two notes to try and emulate a sort of chord effect. I don't know, it just doesn't sound good to me. Back in good old AD 79, with some stars in the background that you can barely see. Avaricious is loading. Please wait. Okay. Um, so we're starting off in bed with our wife. <laughs> and I kind of was right there. This does look like it's um, a King's Quest style game. It actually has the actual time in the upper right corner. So you guys can see when I'm recording this right now. So, back in good old 8079, when you and I were just twinkles in our great, great, great grandfather's eyes, there lived a man named Avaricious. His sole aim in life was to hoard as much cash as he could, hence his name. He's the, here's the catch. He lived in Pompeii. Uh oh. <laughs> what is with the jokes in this game? Oh, also, this person's apparently in Great Britain. Person who made, wait a minute. The registration in the document file said five pounds or t five pounds or ten dollars. This is saying eight pounds or fifteen dollars. That's not very good when you're when you've got a discrepancy between your documentation and your game in terms of the pricing. Also, I think there's something wrong with the font because it it's clearly supposed to be like some kind of border around that, but it just looks weird. Okay, so do we have control yet? Um, game? Okay, there we go. Uh, something's happening. The August tones of your dear wife, Akata, rend the air again. Okay. Versus you stop lying in bed dreaming and get, go, get me some wine, I'm thirsty, get up you lazy something. Uh, okay, so do I type get up? With all hopes of returning to sleep vanquished, you prepare yourself for another day in Pompeii. You don your toga and sandals, attempt to comb your longish, carroty hair, and bleary-eyed begin to think about going out to face the world again. And about time too, says Arcata. Okay then. Oh, so there we are. We do indeed have the ability to move around. I'm guessing this is an exit. Yep. Crapulous, your faithful slave, lurches across the room towards you, drunk as usual. Hail Titus, says Crapulous. Would that be Titus Caesar, you ask? No, Titus and Newt. I don't get it. This game is pretty heavy on the dialogue. I've actually hit the enter key a number of times now, and it's still going. And apparently we can't swim, so that's good to know. Okay, here's something I don't like already. You can't use the five key to stop moving. You have to hit the direction you're already moving in to stop. So, like, I mean, that's how it, kind of how it works in the original King's Quest, but in the original King's Quest and Space Quest and all that stuff, you can hit five and you would stop. Here, it does nothing. You have to push the direction you're moving. Uh, not sure if I'm okay with that. Uh... Where the heck are we now? The road outside of your house. Which, it's kind of weird that there's like these blocks. Can I go back in? Yeah, when you enter a new area, you keep moving as well. So, I mean, that's probably a pit right there. I'm going to guess. Is there like a save command? Um... Okay, so save current position. Save a file, please type the file name. The extension is to is assumed to be .asg. Uh, I don't know. Let's dig one. How you describe the file? Oh, I guess I accidentally entered through that. As you begin to walk down the passage, you notice a large crack along the floor, presumably from a mild earth tremor. Suvius turning in his sleep, but nothing to worry about. You saw it too late, and now what? Uh, 
Uh, okay. So you can't really do anything in here, so I'm guessing we gotta go outside and go somewhere. Let's see how we got to the west of our house. Pompeii Treasury and Treasurer's Office. What else have we got? Oh, apparently nothing that way. So other way we go. And this looks to be like some kind of place to go. I don't know. So yeah, it looks like there's quite a bit of quite a bit of effort went into this game. I get the feeling it's not that big. Just judging by the fact that I wasn't able to go too far outside. So, well, then I don't know. Like, it could be that there's actually a lot to this game, or it could be that there's not a lot. But the fact that it had, well, <laughs> the fact that the dialogue is so extensive, like, I mean, it's it's hard to really comment on this. All things considered, though, the game was being, the, the author was charging a very small amount for this game compared to how much it would have cost to buy an actual Sierra title back then. So I guess with that in taken into consideration, it's not really that bad a game. Well, it's actually not really a bad game at all. It's just weird, that's all. And our last dig for today comes from Robert Mackey, DOS Games backslash board backslash Tom Toy P2. Well, we definitely got another Tommy's Toys thing here. Thing here. Um, we haven't actually seen a lot of these, surprisingly. Um, what the heck? There is like one, two, three. Well, there's an easier way to do this. Der star dot exe. There's 24 freaking executable files here. <laughs> what? Is this like some compilation of Tommy's Toys stuff right here? That'd be very weird. Um, there is a register.doc. Trying to see if there's anything in this that would suggest... Like, there's a toypack2.exe? Hmm. You know, there's a file id.diz. I wonder what that says, given the sheer quantity of executables here. Tommy's Toy Pack 2, Silliness and Silicon. 15 neat software toys and games for earthling kids of all ages, designed by aliens from outer space. Because, yeah, you wanted to sort of give that impression that this is not of the, these programs are not of this world. But, yeah, it seems like this is intentionally supposed to be a whole bunch of <laughs> Tommy's Toys games. Um, I'm not really sure what to do in this situation, because we're obviously not going to be able to take a look at every single one of these, otherwise this would be a very long video. Um, well, let's just look at the help first. Oh, wait, it's actually going to try to run DOSBox's help thing. Uh... Okay, um, how are we going to actually run the help exe when DOSBox is de detecting the help command over the help exe? <laughs> well, that doesn't help. Um, I guess we're just going to have to do it very explicitly here. There we go. Oh, all it's telling telling you to do is run the executables. Okay, then. Well, I'm really not sure which one to start with here. Let's just go with, um, I don't know, Ramparts? It's this one. Tommy's Gorilla Ball Ramparts. Um, we already did a Gorilla Ball thing, I think, but this is not the same. we doing? <laughs> Back. These things are firing at me or trying to do something. I guess I should have read the instructions. <laughs> There's a demo mode. Let's have the computer play. 
Because that's one thing that's interesting about Tommy's toys is that a lot of them have the ability to play themselves. So we can just watch the computer attempt to play and get totally killed with just one point. Uh, let's do Starball. Tommy's Starball. And we got a bunch of special effects going. I think it's already in demo mode right here. Maybe? Oh no, I do have control. What is going on? So, what I can do here is I can actually, like, switch where my star is that I'm firing from. And I'm guessing the goal is to just not accidentally shoot yourself or something. If there's nothing in a particular row or column, I could just move up and down. But if I try to move in the direction of a star that already exists, I teleport and become that star. I'm really not sure about this one. Uh, let's give Ant Farm a try. Tommy's Ant Farm. So it's actually already in auto mode, I think. Maybe. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on here. And that's kind of like... That's kind of like what you would generally expect with a Tommy's Toys game, is that a lot of them are just... They're simple games, but until you understand the rules, you really... You really can't figure them out on your own. And even if when you do understand the rules, sometimes there's a lot of random vari variants into what goes on. Like, I had no idea what was going on there, and yet the game has now ended with a score of 25. So it's like, I have no idea. Uh, balloon? Maybe balloon's something that makes more sense. Tommy's balloon. Just one. And... I'm guessing that's the balloon up there, smiley face, and we're passing by various mountains and stuff. Maybe. Uh, apparently I have the ability to launch decoys and bombs, what? <laughs> okay, so this isn't just a normal balloon, this is like an attack balloon or something. <laughs> so what happens if I try to do like a, whoops, I just got shot by something. One more, and then we'll call it. Um, let's try... let's try Paddles. Because this, sound, this sounds like it might be Breakout related. Maybe. Knowing Tommy's toys, it could be literally anything. Tommy's Paddles. Skip on the instructions, just because. Um... Oh, it's in automatic mode right now. Yeah, you... <laughs> All this game is, is a ball that bounces back and forth, and you have to move your paddle down to where it's you would bounce it. Okay then. See, on one of these days I'm going to do an Ancient DOS Games video on Tommy's Toys stuff and just go through a whole bunch of them, or maybe even all of them, if it can be done fast enough. But... There's a lot of them. I think it's a hundred some odd games. And again, they're all mostly really simple stuff. So if we come across some more of these, I'll definitely show them. But yeah, as you can see, they're 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 weird. Like this this whole video has just been weird stuff. 